love comes with time. I truly believe that we're right there. I feel it. Was Blake Moyne's hometown strong enough to solidify him to the top two? Hey guys, welcome back to another shared news from home. In today's video, we are recapping Blake's hometown and we'll dissect his family's reaction to finally meeting Katie. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future updates. I'm Hiba Berry, joined today by Gabby Gonta. All right, you guys, so we have a lot to talk about. So let's start with the day portion of the date, which was, of course, held in New Mexico, Canada, as they called it. Blake and Katie start the day with a shot of maple syrup. It couldn't get more Canadian than this. Blake says Canadians love maple syrup so much that he even has it on his bedside table and teased he's used it in the bedroom before, which of course led Katie to giggle like a little girl. Uh, the two then played a game of darts and answered questions each time a balloon popped and dropped a piece of paper with a question on it. At one point, Katie was asked if she would move to Canada and said she would move anywhere for love. Now with COVID, they still had to, you know, kind of rough it out with these hometown dates since they still couldn't travel, of course, because of restrictions and quarantining and all of that. But Gabby, what was your reaction to the date, the arrangement so far? Yeah, I thought it was such a fun day. I was really excited to see this one with Blake because since he showed up a little bit later, you know, they've had a few one on one dates, but we haven't get to, gotten to see him that much. So I was really excited for this hometown date. They always do the Canadian hometown dates really well. Um, I think it was the same with like Serena P and Matt. There's just like all these Canadian staples that are just like so fun to learn about. Definitely could relate to the maple syrup thing. I like, you know, drown my pancakes and waffles in maple syrup. So I think I would personally fit in Canada very well. Um, but yeah, I think it was just like very flirty, very fun between both of them. And I think this portion went really well. Yeah, exactly. Just fun. It was very light. And we definitely got to always as always, you know, see Katie and Blake's personalities, how they just always have so much fun together. They're just always kind of goofballs when they're with each other. And they just always, you know, tease and just make fun. And it's just always a light mood whenever they're together. Now, also mm -hmm. the two of them then rode a mechanical moose almost into the sunset and finished the date by playing hockey. Now, during his confessional, Blake said he will inevitably fall in love with Katie, and it's impossible to deny. Now, is it troubling that Blake has not yet said he is falling for or is in love with Katie? Is this maybe a red flag this far into the journey? Or do you think, you know, maybe he's just still trying to take his time? What are your thoughts, Gabby? Yeah, I think because we're so far in already, and it's almost to the end that it's it is, you know, a red flag that he isn't fully there yet. I know it's tough, you know, our expectations for these people to fall in love is like so fast, yeah. but that's just how it works on this show. So of course he did come in a little bit later than the other guys, but still, you know, he was coming in with the fact that he kind of knew Katie before. They sort of talked a little bit before. So you would think his feelings were already accelerated because he knew he was into this girl. So I thought, you know, after spending a few weeks together as a contestant on the show now, that he would have just been fully in it by now. So definitely surprising right. he wasn't there yet. And I think, you know, if he doesn't get there soon, it's not going to work out. And like you mentioned, coming into this journey a little bit later on than, of course, the initial guys, it seemed like he still made up a lot of ground and is here for the final three. So there definitely seems to be, of course, something between them. But is it enough for her to choose him? Is a relationship strong enough in comparison to Greg and Justin? Um, I definitely think, you know, like I've said over and over again, uh, Blake is definitely a runner up to Greg, but I think Blake still has a good chance. I don't think I'm going to totally write him off. He definitely has impressed me. I mean, like I've said in the past, Blake has never really been my favorite, um, but mm -hmm. I feel like now the audiences that have kind of been on the same page of me have kind of you know grown to like him and appreciate him and it's just his humor and that he just tends to fall hard and loves hard so I think that's you know just an, an interesting way to have you know males be perceived that way because you know usually it's all about you know just keeping emotions to yourself but it seems like like really has his emotions on his sleeve and isn't shy 
to express them but hopefully you know he expresses Mm -hmm. them soon because you know time is of the essence and you know time is unfortunately running out so hopefully in uh, the upcoming episode we'll see if he finally says the l word but in the Uh night portion of the day katie finally meets blake's family and sits down with blake's mother emily one-on-one emily right off the bat wanted to know if this was infatuation or if they are digging deep in the relationship and falling in love. She says, looking at her son, he is smitten. Katie breaks the news to her that neither of them have said they love each other. However, Katie goes on to say they can get there and that she sees potential. Now, a running theme in hometowns was Katie not feeling comfortable saying the L word, of course, love, until she stood alone with that final person. And of course, she meant this, you know, just out of respect for the other guys in the competition, as well as, you know, just wanting to keep her emotions clear and real. Now, Gabby, what was your reaction to Katie's tactic, this kind of strategy of not wanting to say those words, I love you, and keeping those cards kind of close to her chest? Yeah, I definitely understand why she is doing it, um, because I know she probably feels like emotions can get really heated and everyone can get really excited and in the moment you might want to say something that you know might cause harm and she has like so much power as the bachelorette kind of so I could see why she sort of laid that rule out for her um especially in this conversation with Blake's mom when you know because the parents are kind of confused always they're like what do you mean you already love my son like he's the best (laughs) so um (laughs) It's interesting how she kind of has to explain that to all the parents. Um, But I do think, you know, when it comes to the Greg situation, she kind of like shot herself in the foot with that because it kind of, you know, didn't work out in her favor. And so I think that might be the same case with Blake, though, because it's just tough when like she's expecting them to open up so much. But then she is basically telling them that she's not going to do the same. And a relationship is two sided and both people need that um affirmation in order to move forward yes the validation is definitely crucial during this journey because if again she's not reciprocating then what's the contestant or the male person supposed to think you know they kind of shut down and that's definitely what we saw with greg and i mean greg definitely shut down so much so that he wanted to completely just leave and uh dip out of the whole journey and just what they had developed as a relationship together and it's hard because you know saying i love you is definitely the emotional part of getting that validation and then also moving on to the fantasy suites you know getting that physical validation as well so that's also really hard for katie you know she's gonna have to deal with that next you know when that time comes i mean i don't i bet she's not even thinking about it right now because she's still processing what just happened and how everything just kind of blew up in her face but It's really about, you know, if you said, I love you to this person, then what's the other person thinking where you haven't said it to them yet, you know, just really messes with emotions. So I understand her stance on not wanting to even go there, but you know, time is running out. This is going to lead into an engagement. These conversations need to be had. And it's just really hard when she's putting up those walls and, you know, this is the time where you're supposed to be putting down those walls and saying those three key words and, I get out of respect, she doesn't want to, but I feel like, you know, you can be in love with multiple people, but it doesn't mean that you have to or are going to end up with all those people. So it's a very, very tricky balance. And it's very interesting just to see how each lead has a different uh, perspective and different kind of way about going on this journey. So it's very interesting to see how everyone kind of tackles it in their own way. Now, in the next portion, Blake sits down with his sister, Taylor, and let's just say his sister, was not here for any BS. His sister recaps how hard Blake previously fell for Claire and Tasha. When those relationships were off the table, he then bounced over to Katie. Before you even met Claire, you're like, I love her. Like, it's gonna work. And then that was gone off the table and how long? And then Tasha came in, you're in love again, like right away. Now I gotta admit, his sister was asking all the questions I was thinking in regards to how quickly Blake always falls in love with a bachelorette lead. Like I previously said, he's the boy that cries love all the time. So we always want to know if it's actually genuine. Does he mean it this time? Now, Gabby, do you think that Blake is kind of similar to the boy who cries love all the time? Because it seems like that's kind of what his reputation has become in this Bachelor franchise. Yeah, definitely. I mean, those were the first concerns that all of us shared news hosts were having when we found out he was coming on another season of The Bachelorette. 
um, because he was so invested in those first two seasons that he was on with Claire and Tisha. And I love that his sister was just so blunt and came, you know, right out with the yes. hard questions everyone was thinking. Yes. Um, but it just seems like it makes sense with Katie. You know, we sort of were thinking those same thing, same things, but it's like at the end of the day, him and Katie are kind of a perfect match because they just are have the same personalities, mesh really well, look super cute together. So I think it really could be real this time. Yeah, and I definitely gave Blake a lot of crap, especially because he has, you know, fallen so easily and so hard for the last two leads. I thought this would be just another case, but it seems like, you know, he has grown and is taking it slow and isn't, you know, putting himself out there too quickly, too fast, where he kind of gets caught up into it. And then it blows up in his face when Tasha moves on and Claire moved on to other guys where they had stronger relationships. So I think he's taking it slow and I think that's smart. And then Taylor, her sister also continued to ask him, okay, they haven't said they're in love yet, but what does it take to change that? And Blake responded by saying there are a lot of factors, including time, of course, Katie's other relationships, the result of hometowns, and how she would mesh with Blake's loved ones. He says he, quote, feels it way more today, end quote, than he did last week. No one has aligned with Blake more than Katie has. Taylor lastly asks if all the boxes are checked, why wait? What if she said I love you to another guy already? I feel it way more today than I did last week. No one's aligned with me like she has, ever. Blake says him confessing his love for Katie, he feels it, but it needs to come naturally. I gotta say, this is a big step for Blake. Like I mentioned, this shows a lot of growth in comparison to like we saw Tasha and Claire's relationships where he said, I love you right away. He has learned to take his time with Katie. Mm -hmm. And I think he has learned the weight of those words and what they carry. And of course, those words being, I love you. And I think it's just really important to express those words in a way when you feel ready, especially in this journey, because time is of the essence. So I think it's kind of like the opposite. He's working backwards because he hasn't said, I love you yet. It means this relationship is more quality and he wants to take <laughs> his time and he wants to, you know, say it when it feels right. Whereas with Tasha and Claire, it was so rushed and it blew up in his face. It didn't work out. So it seems like he had kind of is working backwards. W would you agree with that, Gabby? Yeah, definitely. I think um, with Claire and Tasha, it was more of like the excitement of being on the show and like the possibility yes. that this could be love and he was just like really invested and in, into that and like because when you're on the bachelor they kind of tell you oh you know this time is so short if you're feeling something you gotta you know say it and all of that so I think in his first run at this um that was sort of on his mind so he really put himself out there like that wore his heart on his sleeve which seems like he does in general all the time anyways so then when he had this opportunity with Katie of course you know he had a short amount of time and really needed to show his emotions but like you said, since it was more real, like he had to be a little bit more careful um, and just plan out his strategy a little bit more. So for that reason, it makes sense that, you know, it's a little bit more real of a love and he's taking his time a little bit just to make sure it's right this time. For sure. And then Blake's mother also kind of gave her thoughts about Katie to Blake saying that Katie is genuine and very sweet. Blake sees Katie as his fiance and wife easy. I really feel it then you need to almost like a man up and tell her you love her. Uh, Blake's mom gets very emotional and says she is proud of her son, which gives Blake the reassurance. So much so, it seemed like Katie sealed the deal with the family when they started playing hockey. And they just definitely, you know, meshed because, I mean, what's more Canadian than playing hockey? And then finally, at the car drop-off, Blake was hesitant on saying he loved her. He was so close, but because it is such a strong word, he was not able to. And again, I think that just goes to show you that growth that he has had. He wasn't ready. It wasn't meant to be. But again, he always says it's inevitable that it's going to happen. So we'll just have to watch out and see in next week's episode with the Greg blow up, whether that I love you confession is still on the table. With that being said, and aside from Greg leaving, do you think Gabby Blake's hometown visit was strong enough to make it to the final two or all the way to the end? That's a good question. I definitely think it was because Justin's wasn't very strong. So I think from the beginning, yeah. we've, I've always thought that Blake was really going to be one of the people at the end just because they really mesh super naturally together. And then once you meet the family, 
they're all kind of, you know, loud, fun, rambunctious. So I could definitely see Katie mm-hmm. fitting in with that. Um, so of course it's like unfortunate that he didn't man up, I guess, and say, you know, I love you right there at the end, but I don't know. It's kind of like, I think their connection will be strong enough and Katie will be able to picture herself in that family enough to give him a chance. Um, especially now with Greg gone, of course, that is going to like kind of throw a wrench in all of her plans probably, but I think they're in a good spot to where if Blake does get there and Katie's also there that they could end up together next week. I agree. Definitely Justin's was not strong because unfortunately, even though his parents, you know, couldn't make it, it still was a, such a crucial point to finally meet the family. And unfortunately, you know, whether they weren't comfortable visiting Katie, he, he did have his friends there, but again, it just wasn't his parents regardless. And that's what Katie was looking for, you know, just to get that reassurance from your parents. I mean, that's the most those are the two most important people in your life when it comes to, you know, discussing marriage and making this huge commitment in your life. So I think, unfortunately, the cards just fall short for Justin and Blake kind of, you know, got ahead because he had such a great interaction with his family along with Katie, and it just went really well. And of course, you know, Greg, his was a lot more quality. You know, he had messages sent in from his sisters and he saw all his nieces and nephews and it was just so emotional and his father is no longer with them and Katie's father's not there. So it's definitely more of a deeper connection when it comes to Greg. Of course, you know, we're like a record broken saying that over and over again, but it's just so true. But I don't think that we can, you know, deny Blake. Blake still has a great chance. They have had that chemistry from the start. So we're not going to write him off just yet. But as always, we will have to just tune in and see what the finale will hold. It's definitely going to be a nail biter cliffhanger. It's going to be three hours of a more of a roller coaster. So we'll have to stay tuned for that. All right, you guys, that's all we have to share with you for now. Let us know your thoughts on Blake's hometown visit and his family's reaction to meeting Katie in the comments below. As always, make sure to follow us on all our socials, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on all our future updates in regards to anything and everything Bachelor related. I'm Hiba Berry, joined today by Gabby Gonta. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.